Buckle up, it's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Boom! <laughs> there he is. That, was I supposed to do that with you? Everybody well, asked something matter. about it. You can do what it you want. It doesn't matter. You could, you could not do it or you could do it. I don't want to take away from your shine, so I'll, I'll let you guys. That's your thing. Mm. Okay. Okay. I, I, I like doing it with you or without you, Nick. <laughs> so like I'm, you I'm, too. I'm super excited about this. Nick Ayers part deux. Part deux. Last and- time we did this, I was uh, building my studio and I was doing it on my laptop, walking around <laughs> my laptop in my studio and I felt... Uh, I felt like third rate. Uh, just it wasn't, it wasn't up to my standards. So thank you for having the me. audio. There was like hammering in the background. Yes, it was that just, was the best. Was, they were putting stuff, they were they were hanging like stuff for like sound treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Propeller well, planes just dive bombing. It was yeah. great. It reminded me yeah. of that movie. What's the movie with the guy with the firecrackers in the background? Is it like uh, Boogie Nights or something where somebody's like? With tell, fire us, crack. Tell, tell us more about your knowledge of Boogie Nights. Uh, yeah, I don't I haven't heard of that one. Ooh, I'm, I'm well. a married man. I don't know what that. I've never. I don't know what that means. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> well. <laughs> um. You know what's funny is that uh, I've seen some pictures of you on Facebook that looks very Boogie Nights. Well, I don't like to brag, but I feel like I invented the real Boogie Nights. Um. You know, they, I think they, I think they took a lot of inspiration for the character uh, from, <laughs> from me, so. They're Perfect. very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So since that, that studio that we were in was in California, yep. right? Yep. You built it, you were building it, and, and then like months later, you're out of California. <laughs> right, right, right. You ever heard of the term stupid tax? <laughs> Um, yeah, no, so I still go back. I haven't been back this year as much as I want to for obvious reasons. Um, mm-hmm. but I built it, put a lot of money into it. We, and we, I did use it and then I still use it and I like to go back a lot more often to use it. But, uh, uh, you know, there were, there were, uh, there were things extenuating circumstances this year that, uh, have kind of made that more challenging. So, right. Well, so you I, can always say, I still pay for it. My landlord still loves me, apparently, because uh, he likes to take the money and never see me there. So, <laughs> And you get to say, hey, I have to run back to California to go to my studio. Right. That is, there is a level of fun in saying that, but that gets old really quick um, <laughs> when you have to run to California to go to your studio. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Therein lies the problem. Yeah. So you, now you're in Arizona. Mm-hmm. So welcome. Thank you. Welcome. With they, they just hand you money as soon as you cross the border. They from hand me, uh, yeah. There you they, go. Boom. They they <laughs> hand me uh, money. They hand me freedom. Uh, they hand me uh, a life without wildfires and taxes <laughs> and uh, all this other stuff. Yeah. Just a little heat. So you know, yeah. it's it's hot. It uh, <laughs> but it's I mean, and Jason, I, I don't know what it's like down south for you, uh, but we're up in the Sacramento area. I mean, 100, 105, 110 is not abnormal. I mean, I think here in Arizona, we probably have, what would you say, Craig, maybe 30 to 45 days of that? Yeah. You know, in, in California, you probably have... That's wishful thinking, Nick. Yeah, It's okay. going to keep going. Call, it's going to keep going. <laughs> call it 60 days, right? Oh, yeah, I know. I'm just playing with you. Yeah, so, I mean, in, in California, you might have 15 to 25 of those days. So, it's not yeah. like it was a major culture shock. Yeah. Right. And then they have San Francisco was a hundred and over a hundred yesterday. That's really, what? that's really weird. Normal. That's it's weird. concerning a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but. I mean, uh, when your state's on fire, I mean, <laughs> and, and there's smoke and ash all over the place, you it's, know, probably doesn't help it, but yeah. it's brutal right now. It is. Uh, do you guys get a lot of the fires where you're right now, Jason? Well, I'm in Huntington beach. So right. do you guys have um, down South though? I mean, yeah, not, well, you don't feel the LA, you don't feel the LA area. No, just the ash. Okay. <laughs> um, so I wanted to get into uh, God. You, you are the the YouTube guru, and and back when we talked to you before, um, <laughs> you know, you were you were rocking with that. But now, I mean, you've definitely leveled up uh, your online presence, your YouTube game. You got the better agency. Um, so now you're in SaaS products. Now you're marketing for SaaS products. Yeah. Um, you're doing <laughs> the podcast. We wanted to get you on here to to plug the old podcast. Yeah. Uh, doing that with Preston, which is awesome. Yeah. And uh, wanted to check in, man. Excited for you. 
it's been a uh, it's been a really interesting last twelve months. Um, from the I mean, just personally and professionally, uh, we are you know our 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 YouTube training program is still going strong, uh, and I continue. I mean, I test the waters on that and and do that every single day. It's my really it's my primary source of I would say lead generation, and uh, so we have a lot of fun with that. Yeah, but we uh, I went on board with Better Agency. And uh, that's been a lot of fun. It's way different marketing for a SaaS product, a software as a service, uh, as, a, as opposed to, you know, an insurance agency or even a training program. It's just completely different. So it's really outside of my normal area of comfort in some areas. And it's just different, different, different approaches, but it's, it's a lot of fun. And then, yeah, we have the podcast. We, we have a lot of stuff that we're trying to do just to uh, grow that, uh, build more familiarity and just to, you know, the podcast is great. As you guys know, it just gives a lot of people that may not have had a, a, a voice before it gives them a, a platform and we get to share some really amazing stories of some people. It's, it's a lot of fun. I love that. And what I love, I love what that you're doing. Um, and, and a lot of people need to do now more than any time is uh, really get out there and try some online stuff, right? Cause this year really the, the rubber met the road where it's like, okay, we need like, not backup plans, but we need to not just have our physical presence, but to yeah. have our online presence and just, we need to try new stuff, man. The world changes fast. Yeah, I think, and we've known this, I mean, I don't think we knew it was going to come like this, but I think right. we, we knew that we had to start doing this. We had to, we had to take steps forward and we had to, we had to evolve whatever business we're running, you know, for an insurance agent, you have to, you can't rely on the brick and mortar and being that uh, local hometown insurance agent and just expecting, you know, the lines to go out the door. That, that doesn't happen. Um, you know, when I first got started in the business in 2005, almost all of our business came from the yellow pages. And that's just how business was received a lot by referrals and by people finding you in, in a, a book for, for you youngsters at home they used to send these books out and they were called the yellow pages because all the pages were yellow and you would find phone numbers in there of different <laughs> services. And, and what? And, yeah. It's, 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 a, it's, it's amazing. And it was alphabetical, uh, right? Yeah. It was alphabetical. And, oh, you, and I remember, I remember in those days, you would so always organized. go to the insurance section, the insurance section, you know, if the book was like four or five inches thick, the insurance section was like an inch thick of that. <laughs> and uh, you, you would always try to get creative to try to be first place in the yellow pages. So if, if you know, my name is Thriveshire Insurance, it would be a Thriveshire Insurance. <laughs> uh, so you can get up alphabetically into that. But that's how business was done. And then gradually that more or less got phased out. And then people started doing business a certain way. Now we've kind of accelerated that even more to where a switch has gone off and <laughs> Baby, you better be online uh, because the days of someone coming, driving by and seeing your sign, coming into your business, uh, those, those days, I don't want to say they're gone. And I, don't, and I don't think things like direct mail are dead necessarily, but you need to have that. Doing it. And we all knew this was going to take place one way or the other. I don't think we expected, you know, somebody eat, eat, to eat a bat in the other side of the world <laughs> and then everybody to get sick. And then that was going to force it. Um, I'm kidding. But <laughs> the... The, the where we're at today, if you don't have that direction uh, or that that vision of being online, um, I don't care if you're selling insurance or coffee or anything. Like you, you, you're you're gonna. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be harder than it needs to be. Yep. Yeah. There what, is no um, yellow pages. You're just. I want to know. So. You yeah, go. you go. <laughs> no, you go. You go. <laughs> you go. It was a great car, but that, that also had problems. It had lots it of problems. Mar marketing problems. <laughs> um, I want to know about, so you said that the, the SaaS product has been, uh, you know, a total different way of uh, promoting. Mm -hmm. um, how has that changed your marketing strategy with, especially with YouTube? Um, so the difference is, I don't want to try to, I don't want to bore people too much with it. So I'll just kind of go over what I see as the major differences first. When you are dealing with a product like insurance, it's very, it's a lot more direct response, right? Uh, get a, get a quote, uh, get, get, you know, fast, cheap rates here, do this. You have a problem. You pay too much for insurance. You want to buy this. It's going to save you money. What, what, you know, that's very generalized, but it's more direct response. What, 
works with a SaaS product that we're finding out is that it's a lot more content driven. It's a lot more uh, educational driven. It's a lot more, um, you know, you have to know a lot more about the other players in the market. You have to know what they offer. You have to know what, how you stack up in the marketplace. And so you have to educate and bring people through a different buying process than insurance. And, and I'm sure there's a Venn diagram where there's some collaboration, but our approach has been a lot different. And uh, I think how we've approached that with Google ads, whether it's YouTube or search or display advertising is really kind of honing in a lot more on the features of what the SaaS product better agency, uh, what better agency will actually do for somebody. Uh, with insurance, you're speaking towards things like peace of mind or a uh, tangible, you know, save money type thing. Whereas with SaaS, you know, you, you, if someone's going to use it, you have to really talk to them differently than you would an insurance customer because the, there's two different buying psyches of, of between those two people um, that when they're, when they're looking at a SaaS product, they're, they're comparing, they're, they're making a, a five to 10 year or longer decision theoretically. And so you have to, you have to talk to them a lot differently. You have to approach them a lot differently. And so the attraction models are a lot different. It seems like the great news though is because we're not, we're not dealing with the yellow pages, which was just a shotgun approach, right? <laughs> Let's hope somebody, we grab somebody. Right. Now you can get a lot more targeted, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so in those two different things, what is the approach? Like how do you determine who, how you're going to go after those clientele and then how you generate and, and create those ads? I love the creative that you come up with and it's just yeah, I fascinating think, to see it put into place. I think uh, when it comes to the targeting aspect, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we look a lot smarter than we are, but, but Google, <laughs> Google gives you a lot of control uh, and mm -hmm. Google gives you a lot of options. And so where I can't target insurance agents, I can target people on a wide variety of things from the websites that they go to, to the search terms that they're putting in, to what they're watching on YouTube, or I can, I can uh, send them, you know, solicitations to their Gmail. There's a lot of different creative ways to get in front of your audience. And you also have what I would say as a, as a bigger pool of data on Google than you do on Facebook. Facebook is great. Mm -hmm. Facebook has a lot of data, but there's, there's a king on top of this mountain and it's Google. Uh, from every website that you go to that has Google Analytics to, to Google, to YouTube, which are the two most popular websites in the world, to Gmail, to Google Maps, uh, everything that you can think of that you do on the internet, Google has a really good idea as to who you are. And I always jokingly tell people the Illuminati is scared of how much information Google knows about them. Um, because and there's a reason why you don't see Google, uh, the CEO of Google, be getting grilled by Congress like you do Mark Zuckerberg. I think it's because, you know, the politicians know, hey, let's not mess with Google. They know more about what we're doing <laughs> they know. Than, than anything else. So, um, but Google gives us a lot of power to get in front of those people. And then you have a lot of flexibility with your messaging. So whether it's search ads, you know, Google.com, whether it's YouTube and video, which is my preference, because I just, I, I like it because it's, it's more emotional and I can actually connect with people a little bit differently than a search ad. Um, and then display retargeting that you can see all across, you know, I can follow people all across the internet. Um, there's a lot more power in that. And I think it's something that, and, and the good thing about it is uh, it can get very pricey, but there's a lot of things that even insurance agents can do that uh, if they just did and they spent uh, $15 a month, they can really over, over time, they can really see some really positive results with that, uh, just with brand awareness and recognition and people remembering who you are and being familiar with who you are, which I think is a, it's a big step for a lot of people in their business. Um, and so when we're talking about the, when we're talking about better agency, uh, it's, it's, it's again, it's, it's, it's being more content driven and being more educational than anything else uh, because people are in a different buying mindset, you know, the, the, when people are evaluating, people will buy in, uh, insurance almost on impulse sometimes, right? And we say, well, those aren't the customers we want, but let's face it, th there's a lot of customers who are like, I'm paying too much for insurance. Let me look for this up right now. And they get a quote and they buy. It's impulsive. Mm -hmm. Whereas with a SaaS product or with better agency, what we're finding is people are going to evaluate for the next three to six months. Uh, and so you have to be there the entire step of the way. And I, I think there are lessons that every insurance agent can take out of that, and they can even take some of those, those principles and put them in their, in their business. I always tell people, you know, how often do you buy a mattress? And they'll say, well, I buy a mattress every, every 10 years or so. You go, great. Go to purple.com 
and just look at their website for five seconds. Purple, Casper, uh, insert mattress brand here. They're going to follow you around for the next 10 years. And they're going to act like you're buying a mattress today. And that's the same principle that I think and the mattress industry is so competitive. It's a great example to use because they, they know that you're only going to buy a mattress one every 10, once every 10 years. So when that time comes, they want you to remember them. And so they'll put more money into and more time and be a lot more patient with their advertising. Whereas an insurance agent, they'll run an ad for two days and they go, well, I didn't get any leads. This, this, this doesn't work. <laughs> You know, there's a, there's a different hey, mindset. Yeah. There's a way different mindset that if you're going to do this, if you're going to put your toe, if you're going to put your feet in the water, you've got to be there for the long haul. I, I run campaigns and I, you know, I'm honest with people. If I can get three out of the 10 campaigns that I run to work and be really profitable, I'm happy. There's a lot of campaigns we run because we test a lot of different things. And I'll try to think of ideas for creatives or targeting that, that just flat out bomb. They do. They, they don't work. I wish every campaign worked. It doesn't. Um, and if anybody tells you that theirs does, they're lying. <laughs> um, but you just have to constantly stay with it. Yeah. Is that your strategy? You usually do about 10? No, I'm just giving like a, you know, a success three. rate of about 30%, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, so for my insurance agency, I'm running ads right now in California, Nevada, Oregon, uh, California, Arizona, Oregon, Nevada, and Texas, five different States. Mm -hmm. And we're running for commercial insurance. I'm going after bigger ticket stuff. And I'll spend three to $500 a day. And some days I get a good amount of leads. Some days I get zero and I still spent the money. Mm -hmm. It's just a part of it. And you know, it's ebbs and flows and we launch new things. I see something, I'll, whenever Google comes out with a new feature, I'll test it. I'm like, okay, they put it out there. I'm going to test it. And sometimes it works. Sometimes it works kind of, and sometimes it doesn't work at all. And so it's just a matter of, I'm going to throw this against the wall and I'm going to see what sticks, but you got to have longevity. You got to have patience with any of it. It doesn't have to yeah, it, it is interesting because that's so true, right? You have to, you have to test it and you have to be okay with things bombing. And then at the same time, you also have to be willing to let it go out. Right. It's mindset. the same with anything. Yeah. It's, it's mindset. I mean, when you're, whatever you're doing, whether you're doing lead, you know, buying internet leads and, and running them through telemarketers or you're doing uh you know, YouTube or Facebook, you have to let it run. It's this, this whole two days and sh I didn't get shit. I'm done. Right. Yeah. It's like, well, no. <laughs> there's, there's a couple of things about that. Number one, I, when I talk to people and they're like, well, how much money should I spend on ads? I first want to determine before I give them the answer, I want to tell them, look, part of this is economics. You've only got so much money. We'll talk about that. But the next part is, is mindset you've got to you're not used to spending money on ads and so you're going to panic you're going to freak out the moment that ad spend starts going out and so i'll talk to agents who will tell me that that if i asked them if i said this if, if i said look you do this you're going to get this many leads would you spend a thousand dollars they'll go absolutely so it's not an economics issue uh -huh. it's, a, it's a mindset issue because then when i say they go well can i only spend ten dollars a day well no again you have <laughs> and, and if you need to crawl before you can walk that's fine but also understand without getting too geeky is when you run an ad for two days and then you turn it off, whether it's Google or Facebook, you're telling that you're not giving the machine the data it needs in order to actually work for you. It's machine learning. It's going to mm -hmm. get better and better and better as you continue to feed the money you put into those platforms is like giving a baby food. You've got to keep feeding it. If you want that baby to eventually grow into a toddler, to a child, to an adult. And, um, there are some people that just starve, starve the system. They don't do anything and then they don't get results. And so you have to be willing from a mindset standpoint to say, okay, if I'm going to budget $15 a day, $20 a day, um, I've got to be willing to be okay. The fact that if I spend this money, I will get nothing today. I don't hope, I hope I don't get nothing, but I'm, I have to, I don't want to spend, I don't want to put in the, in the box, anything I'm not willing to, to, to part with. Uh, because there'll be days where you have lots of success. There'll be days when you have none. That's just the way it works on the internet. Um, I, I, I can go out fishing and some days I'll catch 10 fish and some days, you know, the fish just aren't biting. Mm -hmm. It's just part of it. But that's business, right? Placing, sure. making strategic bets and hoping for a return. And Absolutely. if you can, if you can analyze your risk and get better at, at that whole thing, here you go. And so the tolerance is just, it, it seems like it's so low sometimes. People, um, people will ask yeah. me, they'll say, well, uh, they'll ask me about guarantees. 
They'll say, well, what can you guarantee? And I'll say, I can guarantee you nothing, except <laughs> um, I guarantee you that if you do nothing, you will get nothing. If you right. stay put, you're not going to go anywhere. I can guarantee that. In fact, you'll probably go backwards. That's the only guarantee I can make you. I mean, if someone especially makes you, now, if, if someone makes you a guarantee, they, they've just, they, they're trying to get your money and they're trying to lie to you. So right. there's no guarantees. Yeah. Especially yeah. now. I mean, it, it, we, you can either look at this as the worst situation ever or the best or the biggest and best opportunity ever. And we've chosen to make it the biggest opportunity ever, right? Spend more. I mean, you're going to, now the, 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 the ocean isn't as red as it was. So we have, we have a better opportunity to connect with more clients when we spend more. And obviously yeah. that's going to start to, that opportunity may even be gone now, right? Because enough people are coming back in. Eh, probably not. You know, there's still the people that are worried. Well, the data it's, game, right? So it's, yeah. it's, it's all about the, the data that you collect. And so there are a lot of people who jump in. Again, if we're talking about, I don't want to, I don't want to go, I don't want to get too confusing. So I'm going to try to use as much metaphors as I can. You know, when you give birth to a child, that's a, that's your ad account. That's a brand new baby. You just jumped into the world of being a parent. That ad account or baby isn't going to be to the maturity of somebody who's been doing this for a year or two years or five years. And then we start turning that into dog years or two years. You're basically, you know, in your mid twenties. Uh, as far as data is concerned, you're, you've, mm -hmm. you've done this enough and your, your little baby ad account now is, has grown up and it's matured and you're already at a much better place. I, I know people, we, we, there, there are people who, who don't do any targeting. They do no targeting. Everything's open and they get way better results than people who try to do the most perfect targeting because they have an ad account, Facebook or Google, that has learned that has developed, they've spent time grooming it. And now it's at a place where it just gets results for them. Uh, and so for the people that are like, okay, well, I jumped in in March when, you know, I had to go digital and I'm, I'm struggling. Yeah, you're going to struggle a little bit. You're going to struggle in the beginning. That's to be expected because you don't, A, you don't know what you're doing. Um, and you don't know how to speak the language yet. And B, you're, do, you're working with an infant in the machine that has got to grow up a little bit. And if you stay patient, if you stay consistent, you'll get there. You just gotta, gotta keep, keep doing what, just keep doing it. Just keep feeding the child and you'll be all right. And child, love the child is money. So. And that's, and that's good advice, no matter what you're doing, especially in insurance. Like when you're, you know, you're hiring the new person, you know, you're never, you're, you can't hire them. And then the next day know whether or not they're going to be the next rock star in your agency. You just don't know. Right. Like, I mean, like You've been here two new... days. You haven't written 40,000. <laughs> yeah. Get out. Well, I see, I see Jason's <laughs> premium numbers, man. You better, you better, you better be writing 40 K. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it, it goes for anything new that we try. Like, you know, my daughter, when she first started riding a bike, the, she was so frustrated with when the training wheels came off. And I told her like, you got to realize you're going to have to fall down a hundred times before you don't. You're going to have to break your arm. You got that? <laughs> <laughs> Toughen up. It almost got to that too. But yeah, but like, that's the thing. Like you, you're going to, there's no way you're going to knock it out of the park, you know? And so that's why I'm always, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a cynic and I'm a skeptic by nature. And so when I see things that, that people do online, I go, okay. You know, I, I, I try not to be too, uh, I try, I try to balance this, the cynicism and the skepticism when I see, uh, you know, new people get into it and they'll say, well, I got, I got one lead and yeah. for, for $2. I go, okay, <laughs> give, give it an hour, will you? you know? <laughs> uh, just chill out. Um, yeah. So it seems like you picked the right horse, right? With, with YouTube and Google, <laughs> what happened to Facebook? Like where, where everybody was over here making Facebook ads or whole, you know, industry, well, not, you know, whole marketing uh, sales thing to agents from all kinds of different people, buy Facebook ads, do the Facebook ads. And now it's like, it's just, it seems like it's become really challenging well, to get a good acquisition cost from Facebook now. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So You'll never hear me say that Facebook ads are bad. You'll never hear me say that Facebook ads are dead. I think when uh, people, I see people speak in kind of those polarizing statements, they're doing it more for attention than, than basing it on fact. Okay. But, um, you know, I, I, I probably left the Facebook wagon 
all all together. I was doing Google ads and Facebook ads for, for a while. And then I went 100% to Google ads, probably somewhere around 18 months ago. Um, and I mean, Google has been around longer than Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a more, it, it is a stable, it is a stable platform. And, and really the reason why I tell people that I like it is because I'm not a good salesperson. Um, and that's the truth. I'm just not a very good salesperson. Whenever I talk to people from major look, I'm like, look, I'm probably the last person you should talk to, uh, because I'm going to ramble. I'm not going to overcome any objections. I'm just going to talk to you like, like a dog. I'm going to be like the dog who's going to hump your leg when you walk in the door. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to do that. And so the, you start off by saying that I have said that. Yes. Uh, I, and I do tell people a lot of times, look, I'm probably not the right person to try to sell you this. So let's just cut through that. I'm not going to try to pitch you. Um, but I, I like it because I'm not a very good, very good salesperson. And why it works for me is because if I can get in front of people who are, t- who are searching for things, um, that makes my job a lot easier. Um, mm. If I can do things where people can call in or they're specifically looking for something uh, and their levels of intent are higher, that's a really good place to be in if you suck at sales. Because if you're trying to just uh, grab people's attention on Facebook and then try to sell them, it's hard for a guy like me. And so uh, I tell people Facebook is great, uh, but you also have to realize why people go on Facebook. Uh, they go on Facebook to argue about the president. They go on Facebook <laughs> to show off pictures of their food. They go, off, uh, they, they go on Facebook to have community in groups, right? Maybe they're, they're in a, uh, um, a mountain bike community. And then they're engaging with other mountain bike riders. They're congregating with people of a community. And so when you know that and you try to then bend it to your, you, you know, if you can try to kind of create, kind of, you know, little cool angles then to get in front of the people, it, it could be, it could be great. But also, you know, Facebook has a lot of advertisers on it, a lot of advertisers. And that's because for the last four or five years, everybody has sold courses and made money telling people to run Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's a lot of money there. And also, when you talk about, because people will ask me, they'll say, well, th- will YouTube get the same way? And I say, yeah, it's going to get busier. Uh, but I also think that because we're talking about people getting on camera, there's going to be a more of a barrier to entry. Mm-hmm. Um, and with Facebook, I can, you know, I can make some dummy fake page that has nothing to do with my brand. <laughs> I can put up a fake logo. I can call it something fake. And then I can, I can put a picture up that has nothing to do with anything and then I can sell something or I can advertise something. There's, you know, any Tom, Dick and Harry can do that. Uh, there's no, there's no, um, <laughs> there's nothing personal in that. As far as when I'm on YouTube, I got to pick up a camera or my phone and I got to talk and do it. That's different. And so that's going to, that's going to make it, I think less likely for a lot of people to jump in at once. Yeah. Um, but Google is very competitive. I mean, in insurance, uh, for, for Google, insurance is the most competitive keyword. Uh, that's because companies like Progressive and Geico and State Farm and the such, they spend a lot of money. So search, Google search, when you go to google.com and you type in how much for car insurance in Huntington Beach, California, that's very competitive uh, because you're competing with all the big boys. Uh, there are definitely ways to do it. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, there's, there's some, some really, you know, way, there's some ways that you can do that, but that takes time too. Um, so you have to get a little creative with it. YouTube, on the other hand, less people do that. And cause they, again, for the same reason why they do Facebook ads, they can do Google search ads. Uh, YouTube allows me to kind of play and swim in waters where there's not as many people. And if you know what you're doing, then you can, you can re- I mean, you can really stand out in your community pretty fast. I love that. And so you don't use any kind of uh, retargeting on Facebook from Google? No, I, I, I do on some things. Um, I probably should do it more. What I use Facebook for personally, and I'm not saying this is what you should do. I use Facebook more as the real top of funnel type stuff and the very low hanging fruit things. So as an example, it might be to promote a content piece, or it might be where I can just get them to click over and, and, and read something, or it might be to subscribe to a channel, or it might be to watch a video. Right? Things that really have very low levels of commitment, 
Um, that's what I find it to be a really solid platform for. Um, and I'm not, and, and I'm, I'm, I don't consider myself a Facebook ads wizard by any stretch of the imagination, but that's, I find it to be more useful for me when I can make it really low commitment things. Um, and then I can kind of bring them through the, the awareness uh, funnel, so to speak. And, and when they now have some recognition of who I am now and they see me an ad, they see an ad where maybe now I'm doing something a little bit different uh, with the banner ad or with YouTube ads, it's a little bit more direct response. Um, and they're already maybe a little bit more familiar with who I am. And because maybe if I took them to a content piece, uh, now they're maybe a little bit more trusting of me as well. So that's how I use Facebook ads. I don't, I've kind of moved away off of using it for just pure lead gen. Um, I just, I, I don't like to swim in those waters as much anymore. So um, you mentioned earlier for, you know, if somebody wants to get started, I think there's two things. One thing, if somebody wants to get started, it's super overwhelming, right? You log in, you're like, where do I sign up? And then you go to AdWords and it's like, oh, like there's so many buttons to press and everything. Sure. So that's one piece to it. And then you also mentioned for something as low as $15 a month, they could get started. So sure. let's yeah, talk, nice. talk yeah. to those agents out there. Like what, what do you even mean? Like this just seems overwhelming to me. Yeah. So, I mean, if you are looking for, I mean, there's lots of different avenues where you can learn just the, uh, the technical, like how to set up an ad account. I, I have that stuff on my YouTube channel. You can find it all over the, all over YouTube. I had to set up a Google ads account. You just go to ads.google.com and you set up an ad account and you can connect your YouTube channel, set up your billing. You're good. Um, and then you can start running different ads, uh, for, for YouTube or whatever you want to do. And I always tell people, you know, the technical stuff, any, any, any blind monkey can figure that out. That's not there, there's, <laughs> any there's, blind monkey. Well, there's a million and one resources online that will show you yeah. how to do that stuff. Uh, for $15 a day, what I was referencing was the ad spend, the money that you're willing to pay Google to distribute your ads. However, whatever ads they might be, whether they're videos on YouTube whether they are search ads or whether they're, you know, banner ads, the ad spend is what you're, the coin that you're willing to put into the Google machine in order for them to take your stuff and show it to your targeted audience. And so you can do that. Uh, I, I, I don't recommend it depending on what you want to do. If you're trying to drive leads, well, you might want to spend more than 15 bucks <laughs> a day. I mean, little, uh, little in, little out. And so, but if you just want brand awareness, you just want to make it to where you, when you go to the gas station or you go to the Starbucks or whatever, if you want people to be able to recognize you over time and, 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 and enhance the conversations that you're already having with prospects who go, Oh yeah, I saw your video on YouTube. You know, you, I see you all, I can't get on YouTube without seeing your face. That's a really good, great way to do it. And so, uh, whereas that's not a pure lead generation strategy. That's a, that's a, that's a more of a brand strategy that, enhances the conversations you're already having with people. I love it when I walk into uh, somewhere local and they'll be like, hey, I've seen your, your, I've seen your video on YouTube. I go, that's great. That's awesome. And then that I can awesome. then open the, they've opened the door for me to have a conversation with them at that point. And so yep. then I can ask them direct questions. So from a brand standpoint and from just uh, having people know who you are, 10 to $15 a day, that'll do it for you. Uh, you, you, can, you can go a month or two with that and You'll start getting recognized. You'll start having people know who you are and, and they'll be more familiar with your agency or your brand or who you are. And that's pretty cool. And, and what, what is the time like somebody would have to invest from not knowing anything to like jumping on the platform for somebody that's super intimidated, right? Because I think yeah. that's the biggest, the, there's, this is such a large, like when we're talking about Facebook ads or, or Google ads or any of these ads, it just sounds like a big commitment. I don't know sure. anything about it. Sure. Um, sure. Absolutely. Um, you know, I feel the same way about accounting, but you know what? I run a business. <laughs> I need to know what my numbers are. Um, Touché. You, you know, like th there's lots of things in my business that are intimidating and that are complicated, but that's why I run the business. Now right. you can delegate a lot of that stuff out. There's lots of things you can do to delegate some things, you know, and, uh, I wish there were more services that were in our space that did a did a great job. Um, I, I'm not saying there's not. I just I can't personally vouch for a lot of things. And so for me, I made the decision. I just I want to figure this out. I want to know it. I, I, this is something that I'm passionate about. Uh, it, it's right in what 
I my interest in topics are. So I'm going to figure this out. But there are lots of, uh, you know, for, for, for the newbie, I would say that if they were, if they, if they made the mental decision, you know what? This is hard. Uh, this is not going to be easy, but I'm dedicated to figuring it out. If they approach it with that mindset, there's no reason why they couldn't figure enough out to be really dangerous within a week. Um, there's mm-hmm. enough resources out there that will help you do that. Um, I mean, I have a lot of content just on my public YouTube channel where people can watch that stuff. Um, you can do that and then you can simply read what you see on the screen and say, do I want this or this? Hmm. Well, let's try this, <laughs> you know, but you can, there's a lot that you can do to, to get started and be dangerous within a week's time, if not sooner. We have people who join Made You Look who know nothing about Google ads, never, never created it in their life. And they're really serious and they'll have, you know, they'll join on Monday and they'll have an ad up by Wednesday. Now, is it like the perfect ad? Well, no, but nothing that they, you do for the first time is going to be perfect anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, but they can do it. Uh, and then there are some people that take six months. So it's, it's kind of an individual thing. Love it. So they're going to, so, so somebody get frustrated after they're doing this for themselves and then they want to go to made you look and, yeah. and, uh, and check that out. Where do they go? Let's talk about that. Then let's, then I do want to focus a little bit on the SAS product because yeah. I think it's, that's really interesting. What you've Absolutely. Done. No, I, I'd love yeah. to talk about that. So I mean, if they want to, if they want to talk to me about made you look video marketing, they would just go to my website, www.made you look video, made you spelled out look video.com. <laughs> Uh, cool. And they can schedule a uh, uh, time with me. They're going to talk with me. They're not going to talk with someone in the sales team. They're going to talk with me. Uh, we've already made that. And you won't sell them. Yeah, you won't sell yeah. them. Well, may hump their I'm going to try to sell them, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to be the most effective at it. Um, no, I'm not, I'm going to, I tell people, look, I'm going to tell you exactly what we do. I'm going to tell you how we do it. And we're going to determine if this solves a problem for you. If it doesn't, we're going to know right away. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to sell you. If you're like, yes, I need to know more about this. Well, then we'll have a further discussion. Um, and that's just my approach to it. Um, but that's how they would find out. Cool. Love so it. the SAS, so, uh, better, better agency. Talk about that. Better agency. So, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's been a real void, I would say in our industry when it comes to, uh, you know, there's lots of buzzwords, automation and data and all these things that if you ask people what it means, they go, I don't know. Um, if they're being honest. What Better Agency does is we believe Better Agency is, is the first and only what we call ORB. Uh, we're coming up with our own acronyms here, and that's the Omni Relationship Builder. And mm. we're really excited about where it is now. We're really excited about where it's going to be in the next three to four months. Um, but Better Agency helps insurance agents who don't know what to automate. They don't know how to automate. They don't, they don't know how to have a, a system in place for uh, their workflow or for their team. They don't know what their service team is doing all the time. They don't know, they, 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 they lose track of renewals or claims or all this information. You know, there's lots of products on the market, broad market and even in our space that will try to scratch the itch of some of these things. But Better Agency really kind of goes a mile deep and uh, really solves a lot of problems for people when it comes to uh, having the campaigns that are already done for people. We're talking eight, 12, 15 step uh, plus campaigns, email, text, and task management that any producer can walk in and say, okay, I know exactly what I need to do today. Any agency owner can look at their team and say, okay, this is where they need to be. This is where they're at. This is what, this is the metrics of what they're doing. This is the, this is what, how they're performing on calls. This is the communications that they're sending out and receiving really gives the agency owners a really firm grasp uh, of that. And, uh, you know, we're, 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 we're building partnerships with people inside and outside the industry. We just, uh, we just, uh, we had our Hawksoft Direct integration. Uh, by the time this is released, we'll have now certs a two-way integration with now certs. Uh, we are uh, we've struck a really cool partnership with Tarmica, uh, so we're going to have commercial lines and eventually personal lines rating all within uh, Better Agency. We have the direct integration with Lightspeed Voice. Uh, that's a deeper integration than any other platform has uh, when it comes to not just screen pop, but also call recording two-way, uh, all the dashboard analytics, everything in one system. If you're an independent agent, you know how frustrating it is to work with 15,000 different systems when it comes to your AMS, your CRM, your Raider, your, uh, your email, your tech, all that stuff. Better Agency has put all this together. Now you can actually feel like a captive agent uh, or, or more like that and, and, and have a lot more simplicity, a lot more ease of use. Uh, all the notes, everything is stored. 
Uh, it's a really cool feature, and, and we're really just getting started. That's the really exciting part. There are some things I, I, I can't divulge just yet, um, but there are, there are some things that we're doing and that we're going to do here. If we can get them done by the end of 2020, uh, I think it's going to make up for the entire year being awful, actually. Uh, <laughs> I, if we get these things done, It'll 2020 erase. is salvaged. <laughs> Perfect. It. It's, it's, and, good. it's and great it's, for everybody. It is. I'm, I'm it's hoping. actually possible that that uh, captive agents could also experience yes. the same things you're talking about. Yes. The yes. same frustrations so, <laughs> with yes. a million systems. Yes, and so and that's another thing, right? There there are platforms who shall be uh, who will remain nameless, and they cater to one or the other for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some platforms that just go all in on the captive side, and then there are platforms that go all in on the independent space. Not right, not wrong, just preferences by those companies. Better agency is going to really be a solution. We actually think it's going to be an easier solution for uh, captive agents to use it as opposed to independent agents to use it. Um, just because there's a lot of things that an independent agent will kind of need or want right now today as we're recording this uh, that <laughs> a captive agent doesn't need. And so mm -hmm. being able to have something that really solves a problem for the majority of the industry is going to be great. There are platforms that uh, stake their claim on really – solving uh, the problems for maybe five to 10% of the industry. And that's fine. Uh, but we feel like what better agency is going to do, it's going to solve a problem for 80 plus percent of the industry. It's really that component uh, that is going to uh, be something that any, almost any agency owner can use. Uh, and it's going to solve a lot more problems for them. It's going to help people make more money. Uh, when it comes to cross-selling, everything's done for you. When it comes to renewal retention, everything's done for you. Now, you still have to sometimes pick up the phone and talk to people. Uh, but when it comes to claims handling, when it comes to your service team, when it comes to your sales team, when it comes to your admin or your ownership team, it's the only platform where everybody can be in, in on it and can kind of see what's going on and know exactly what they're doing, where everything's at. And it's not, it's not white labeled. It's not built on some other platform. It's something we self-funded and made ourselves. And this is, uh, it's, I get excited to talk about Your it. Baby. It's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's awesome. It, it really is. And uh, I'm excited to be a part of the team. Oh, is there an open a API on the back? Yeah. So uh, we have a full Zapier integration, but we do have uh, an, op we do have uh, an API that allows us to integrate if other people would, be ever so willing you know we have right. conversations with, <laughs> have, uh, yeah. we have conversations with other people other uh, platforms and companies uh, for various verticals in the in, in the insurance space and some of them are like yeah let's have a conversation let's let's figure this out and then we have some they're like you know if we uh, integrated with you there'd be no need for us and we go <laughs> well um okay um <laughs> i bid you i did <laughs> yeah i mean and so their the, their answer is uh no uh, and we're fine with that too. I mean, we're not, but we kind of know what the, we kind of know what our direction is as a company and we're going to go in that direction. Awesome. And the podcast. So tell us what to expect on the podcast. Podcast is us interviewing, is us giving a voice to people who may, may not be well known in the industry. Some, some people will know them, but it's, it's, it's a lot of it is better agency users. And we really operate on a very simple framework for our podcast. It's agency owners or agents, but mainly agency owners from either the, the independent space or the captive space. And our questions are very simple. Tell us about a problem you had in your career. What was the struggle that you had? How did you, how, what was the epiphany? How did you realize you needed to solve this problem? What did you do? Be specific. And where are you at today? And, and we just kind of go down a road where we listen to their stories. They, and a lot of agency owners can relate to the things that people are talking about because you know, there's nothing new under the sun. And so right. when someone, when an agency owner is talking about, you know, as a scratch agent, I didn't know where my business was going to come from. I didn't know I was tired of doing X, Y, and Z. I was doing this, I was doing that. And just having to spin a million plates and feeling overwhelmed. Well, that's a story that a lot of scratch agents can, can mm. familiarize themselves with um, or, or, or feel connected to. Or when we have somebody talking about, hey, this is my model for agency acquisition. This is something that I do that it's kind of unique. And, you know, I go after agencies that nobody else really wants. I don't look for the the polished agencies. I'm looking for the ones that need the rehab, you know? So it's, it's, it's taking people through kind of that journey where they're hearing from their peers and we're going to try to bring in people from the outside as well, uh, outside the industry. Cause we feel like there's value there, but it's where they can, they can connect with somebody that is just like them and it either uh, inspires, encourages them or it gives them a, a great idea. And so 
we have fun with it. You know, we we have our next round of batch record. I don't know how you I don't know how you guys do it, but we do uh, we do we're doing batch recording. So our next batch recording is this weekend. Uh, what's today? Thursday. We're gonna do it on Saturday. We got eight more uh, podcasts to record, and it's a uh, it's a lot. I mean, it's yeah. a whole day, and uh, but it's cool. And uh, Jello you know, brain by the end. Yeah. Well, fortunately, like I'm I'm doing a lot of talking here, but you know, I think it's like you guys do a great job. Like you just you just let them talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. try to you just let them talk and um that's you know it's not a whole lot that i gotta do other than listen to you and uh yeah. you know so it's, it's cool and it's cool. good to do with it's good to do with preston because preston it's easy to work with him because he can also be really quick on the fly yeah. and he could be funny and uh you know we could take jabs at each we have the relationship where i can you know we could jab each other and yeah uh, you know so that's, <laughs> you guys understand. that's awesome yeah i love it i love it so on the last time we talked, we talked about uh, wrestling and everything. I wanted, I know you're kind of an 80s, 90s trivia head. So yeah. I have random foods, TV shows, and maybe a movie or two. All right. I'm going to throw it out there. And no I want you to tell me the first thing that comes to mind. Oh, so it's not like, or a, trivia. Your it's not like, a, it's not like a true or false trivia. It's, it's like, you, no. saw, like, you want word association? Word association. Or like just it. like your thoughts on it. Your so, thoughts on it. Okay, well, this so is a big you. surprise, Mr. Jason. I didn't I hear anything about I got to keep the answers relatively short. It's almost like rapid fire, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, but you don't have to keep it. You can go long if you want, but you don't have to. Do you want me to keep to a theme or you said wrestling? So is, I'm, am I saying the wrestling theme or just anything in general? Nope. Nope. Anything in general. So okay. first, just thoughts. Thoughts on this. First thing, Cobra Kai, the new TV show. You know, I don't watch it because I don't want it to ruin my feelings of the originals. Okay, first off, it won't, so you got to watch that. Okay, That's not I've bad. Been told, I I've, been told, I've been told this, yeah. It's, I promise. But I've okay. been, I've been, I'm so romanticized, you know, the, the first two movies especially. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, it will take it to a new level, and it will give you a different appreciation for it. Okay. Uh, the second thing. Okay, so Jake the Snake Roberts. Yes. Like him? Uh, I, so I him. like him a lot now. Um, back then he was a heel and I wasn't too much of a fan of Jake the Snake predominantly because I was a Macho Man fan. I, you know, and he was, oh, he always played a heel role and so right. a bad guy role and you know, I hate snakes. And so, but I like him. I like Jake, <laughs> I like Jake Roberts today and his yes. story. That was an awesome, yeah, that was an off, awesome uh, documentary. Um, so Iron Eagle. Uh, the, it's a ripoff of Top Gun and, yes. uh, and and other movies like that. Uh, not not done too well, but it's one of those things where you can look back at it and say that was part of my childhood. Yep, the show Perfect Strangers. It was kind of before my time, but you know, oh. and I don't think you've seen Balky on anything else. But uh, <laughs> it was one of those movies that it fit right before like Family Matters on a TGIF. Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and step by step. Yep. Yep. Um, did you ever own a pair of British Knights? I did. What was your? What did you have the black and white ones? I did. I did. I had <laughs> British Knights. Um, but I, you know, back when I was a kid, like you wanted the Nike, like the pump, like you wanted to be able. Right. To, that's what you wanted, and that was kind of where it was either that or Jordans. But British Knights were kind of like a poor man. It was like a third rate type of uh, shoe. <laughs> Big mix cereal. Not too familiar. Hmm. Okay, it was. Craig, you don't remember either? Mm. Big Gosh, Craig's no. oh, it's, it's, it's yeah, the creature that had all the different parts. Uh, anyways, no. okay. I mean, I make my own big mix cereal at the house with like honey bunches of oats and Cheerios and treats. <laughs> you know? Yes, eh, same thing. What about crunch taters? Never heard of those crunch either. Crunch what taters, yeah. And when uh, in Home Alone, when he's watching the the old the uh, old black and white movie, he's eating them in there. Um, they were awesome. Wow. Filthy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. What about New York Seltzer? Not as uh, so. I was a Pepsi Clear guy uh, for the limited time that I was <laughs> around. <laughs> um, did you ever watch Small Wonder? Of course I did. Nice. <laughs> what thoughts? <laughs> Comments. It's one of those shows where it's if if um, like you if like it'd be the perfect show like if wgn was still on tv like it like when, if they just did like reruns but uh it's not top 10 no it's not <laughs> saved by the bell it's not alf did you watch it 
Yes, from Melmac, uh, and to this <laughs> reasons why I don't have cats. Um, Alf is one of those things like you wish, like if I don't, I, I should actually check this if it's like on Hulu or anything. Is it on Hulu? Because my kids I don't think so. love that. Um, you can't find it anywhere, and it's like a classic TV show. It is. It is. That's how I feel about um, what was it? Silver, not Silver Spoons. Silver Spoons is one of them. That was a good Growing one. Pains. Growing, growing Pains has Pains never been on anything. Long, but Growing Pains was running for a long time after its syndication. Uh, it was still on for a while. Kind of like Saved by the Bell. It, it, it was on. But you can't Save find it Bell. now. Save like I would Bell. love to. Yeah. yeah. It's because Kirk Cameron, he's like blackballed. <laughs> That's true, right? <laughs> <laughs> cool. That is it for me. Uh, did you ever own a neon phone? Remember the old rotary neon phones? No, I did not own a neon phone. That's all we had. <laughs> And then the, well, you guys are a lot older than me. Yeah. <laughs> Operator, give me 613. That's Craig's. Yeah. yeah. Operator. And then the, we started with tele, Telegram. Uh, did, you, did you ever dial but popcorn on it? Oh, of course. Do you find out what time it is by dialing popcorn? That's correct. Our clock broke. Oh. Well, if, if somebody wants to know more about all the different stuff that we talked about today, um, how do they get a hold of Nicholas Ayers? Um, I'll give you uh, three ways. If you want to get a hold of me directly, you can just connect with me on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, if they want to know more information about Made You Look, they can go to the website, www.madeyoulookvideo.com. They can go to my YouTube channel. They can watch any of the content that we have. Uh, and if they want to learn about Better Agency, it's www.betteragency.io. Not .com mm. because we're, uh, we're poor, but www.betteragency.io. <laughs> You can sign up for a 14-day trial. Cost you one dollar. Get under there. You can test drive everything. I think Jason's gonna do that pretty soon. Um, no, but uh, you just yeah, that's how you would uh, find out more about Better Agency. You can watch a demo there, or you can schedule a live demo with either myself or somebody else, depending on when you do it. Love Perfect. it. Cool, man. Well, thank you so much. I love catching up with you. Yes, love Great seeing to have you on. We're gonna love have you. We're gonna have you get. We're gonna have you guys on the Better Podcast. Dude, we'd love to do it anytime. That'd be fun. Yeah, we'll get you on the <laughs> next. We'll get you on the next batch recording schedule. All cool. right. So. Sounds good. Great Nick. to have you, Nicholas Ayers. Yes, we sir. will see you soon. Yes, sir. All right. Have a good one. <laughs> Mr. Craig. Oh, Mr. Jason. That, that's like the good old days. The old bell days. Times were so much simpler back then. That, and how many? We've had over like 200 interviews. Mm-hmm. Right? It's nuts. It is nuts. So we put together a little webinar from all the things that we've learned, right? Yeah, totally. I love it. It was a lot of fun um, doing it, putting it together. And there's some really good stuff in there. Yes. What did we learn? So what did we, we learned how to sell hundreds of thousands of premium a month using any internet leads. And this is based on a whole bunch of big dudes selling ton and ton yeah. ton of premium a month, like yeah. over a million. Yeah. And it, 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 it eliminates that turnover. Right? The staff doesn't get burned out. It does. It creates predictable sales. Like, whoa. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, and we also learned how we can copy the processes of the big, giant, fastest growing PNC carriers and the big local agents. Yep. That was a lot of so, fun. So it was fun. We put it together. We It's on a website. Go to love.teledudes.com. <gasps> That's that L O V E dot T E L E D U D E S dot com. How do you spell like that on the fly, Mr. Jason? Well, it took me some practice, but it's love dot T E L E dudes <laughs> dot com. You are good at that. So that let it? me get this straight <laughs> it's love, L O V E dot tele dudes. Dot com love dot teledudes dot com Ooh. I love that <laughs> I, I love it too I surprised you too Mr. Craig you, you didn't know. tricked me <laughs> all right well I'll see you later okay bye